Hello everyone and welcome to my channel MI Tutorials. As you all are aware that I make Power BI tutorials every week on my channel and it has been quite some time since I made a tutorial on Excel. So I thought this week I will create a tutorial on Excel showing you 10 different tips and tricks which will make your life easy. So let's get started with this tutorial. So the first tip that we will learn here is how to prevent duplicate entries in a particular column. Let's say for example I have an ID column over here. I will start assigning IDs to these customers and if I enter the ID again, for example, three over here, it should throw me an error and should not let me enter the same value again. So let's see how we can do this. Let me first clear these cells over here and then I'm going to go to the data tab and click on data validation under settings, select custom and let's type in a formula over here, count if open brackets over here, select the cells where you are going to enter the IDs, press F4 so that you log the entire range and then say comma B2 and close the brackets here and say is equals to one and then let's go to the error alert tab over here i'm going to select the style stop you can choose whatever you want i'm going to give it a title saying that duplicate values not allowed and then error, error message saying that ids are not allowed you can enter whatever message that you want over here i'm going to click on ok and then i'm going to copy this particular cell select the rest of the cells over here right click paste special and click on validation say ok and now let's enter the IDs again over here. And if I enter the ID four again over here, this will throw me an error saying that duplicate IDs are not allowed and this will not allow me to enter a duplicate value. Let's look at the second tip for today, which is quite interesting. And when you have multiple tabs, something like this with same st data structure in all the tabs and you want to sum the rows and the columns over here, Instead of doing this on every tab individually, you can do all of this together. So how we can do this is let us first select all the tabs where we want to sum the rows and columns. And once you have selected this, you need to press control and select these tabs. And then I'm going to select the range where I want to do the total. In this case, I'm going to select these cells over here and these cells over here so that I have totals on my rows as well as columns. So once this is selected, I'm going to press alt and plus sign over here. This will automatically sum the rows and columns for me. Now this has been calculated in not just this one tab over here, but this has been now calculated in the rest of the tabs which we selected as well. <clears throat> now let's look at the third tip for today. This is called sequencing the numbers. Let's say for example, I have customer names and you want to enter the IDs for these customers in a certain fashion. Let's say you want to call this as TN-01 and then this is TN-02. Right. Instead of doing this manually, we can do this in an automated way. So how we can do this is let us make use of the sequence function over here. So I'm going to say, let's say I'm just going to enter 20 over here, close the brackets here and press enter. And you will see that we've now created a sequence of numbers ranging from one to 20. I'm going to text format this so that I get two digits over here instead of just saying one. So now I have two digits for all the IDs. And now I want to combine this with the prefix value, which was TN. So I'm going to say TN hyphen, close the quotes over here and say, and that particular text value. Now we have automatically created the sequence numbers. Now in the sequence function, I've entered only 20 over here because we, and then we've got only the output for 20 rows, but we have 26 over here. So I'm going to change this to 25 so that I have the sequence for all the rows over here. And if we add a new name to our customer name column over here, you will see that the ID column is not getting auto populated. So to auto populate this, what we can do is we can simply come back over here, remove this 25 over here and use a formula here count a and then select the range that you want in this case i'm going to select the entire column b over here which also includes the header value so i'm going to say minus one i need to close the bracket over here and press enter now you see that it has automatically populated for the last column as well if i enter some more customer names into this particular range over here you will see that the id column is populated automatically now let's look at the tip number four for today, which will let you add borders automatically as in when you enter the data in a particular column. Let's say, for example, if I enter one, two, three over here, I want these rows to get bordered automatically. So how can we do that? So let's go back to our home tab and click on conditional formatting. Let's click on manage rules. 
let's create a new rule and use a formula to determine which cells to format so over here I'm going to say is equals to I'm going to select the ID column over here and then I'm going to press F4 so that only my column is logged over here and not the rows and then I'm going to click on format I'm going to go to the border tab and select outline over here and then click on OK. In the applies to section over here I'm going to say is equals to and select the entire range where I want the borders to work and then I'm going to click on apply and OK and now let's enter ID 4 over here and you will see that we've automatically got the row formatted in the border. If I add the row ID over here, you will see that this particular row has been bordered automatically. The next tip or the fifth tip that I'm going to show you today is actually quite an interesting one. Let's say that you want to identify few of the rows over here and copy it to a different column or maybe a new tab in itself. Let's say if I want to copy this cell over here, I'm going to copy this, paste over here and then let's say I decide to copy this, copy, paste it over here. This job is quite cumbersome especially if you're looking at a lot of rows and just trying to switch between different workbooks or different tabs to copy paste the data. I'm going to make your life easy. So what you you can do is you can click on this particular icon over here which says clipboard and expand this and then if you have any selections over here you can simply say clear all let's say that if i want to copy this particular row over here i'm going to come here select that click on copy and then let's say i decide to copy this i'm going to copy this you see that it is now getting copied into the clipboard and now let's say if i decide to copy this i'm going to come here make a selection click on control C to copy and then I come here select control C and then kill zone 2 I want to copy this now all of these movies names have been copied to the clipboard and you can see what all have been copied over here and let's say if you've incorrectly copied gear of war 4 here you can simply come to this drop down and select delete over here and now you are left with these four selections that you have made to copy into another sheet or another workbook and what all you can do is you can simply come over here select the cell where you want to copy and select paste all over here and now all the selection that you made have been copied into a new range of cells isn't this really cool? I hope you guys are enjoying the tips that I'm sharing in this particular tutorial. Also do let me know in the comment section if you were already aware of any of these tips that I have shared with you until now. I have shared five tips until now so let's go to the sixth one. In the sixth tip I'm going to share how do you add blank rows in between. Let's say that you want to add some blank rows in between after every single row over here and you want to add some notes or some sort of information related to this particular row in this blank row. So how do you do that especially when you have large amount of data. So what you can do is you can let's say I, I will add an ID column over here and say one two three and then I'm going to select this and copy the values until the end and then I'm going to copy this paste these values again towards the end of the data set and then I'm going to go on top add a filter over here and then say sort largest to smallest and now we have added a blank row after every single row I can simply delete this column over here and now you have a blank row after every single row. Let's look at the seventh tip for today which is flash fill. Let's say you have customer name and you want to identify their respective first name and last name. So instead of writing a formula and all of that, there's an easier way to do this in Excel. All you have to do is on the first cell over here, type in the name that you want. In this case, I want the first name as Guy and last name as Armstrong. So I'm going to type in just that and then I'm going to go here to the second cell and press Ctrl E. Excel will identify that you are looking at the first name and will automatically populate in rest of the rows over here. And likewise, I can come to last name and press Ctrl plus E and you will see that the last name has been populated automatically in these cells. Let's look at the seventh tip for today, which is fill blank cells in between. For example, you come across a data set, something like this, and you, if you have to copy this particular data over here, you need to select this press Ctrl D or copy paste and then come over here do this to repeat this for all the cells over here it is quite a tedious task and I have an easier way to fix this so what I will do is I'm going to select all the cells over here wherein I want to fill the blank cells with I'm going to make the selection and press F5 so once I do that this particular dialog box appears over here I'm going to click on special and select blanks and click on OK so the moment you do that all the blank values have now been selected what I will now do is I'm going to say is equals to and refer to my previous cell over here and then press Control plus enter. 
The moment I do that, all of my blank cells have now been filled with the previous row value. By using this technique, you don't have to manually go and fill in the blanks between your cells. Let's look at the ninth tip for today, wherein I'm going to teach you how to filter and get data. Now I have movies name and I have their respective genre information over here. And let's say that there are three different genres over here. Action, comedy, action, sci-fi and animation over here. That's exactly what I have over here. And you want to identify what movies belong under which genre over here. For example, animation, comedy, history. I'm going to come over here copy this cell, paste over here. And likewise, this is action sky five war. I'm going to come here, paste that information over here. But again, a manual process, there's an easy and automated way to do this. So how do you do this is basically I'm going to come here, say filter. I'm going to make the selection over here. This is the column that I want to return as the output and then press F4 over here and say comma include. I'm going to select the genres that I have over here and press F4 and say is equals to the cell that I have over here, which is cell A3. I'm going to close the bracket here and press enter. And now I have automatically fetched all the movie names which belong to genre animation, comedy and history. And if you have to populate the same thing over here, all you can do is just select these cells over here and press control plus R and voila, you have all of the information that you're looking for in just a couple of clicks. Let's look at the last tip for today. This function is called string fit. Now, when you have rows something like this and when you play around with the width of that particular column, you often see that the data is either uh, overlapping or they need to be text wrapped so that they appear in one particular cell. But what happens is that you either have to text wrap it or you have to reduce the font. But Excel has an option which will let you string fit. Right click the column, go to format cells and under alignment over here, there is something called as shrink to fit. Now let's select or check this box over here and click on OK. What happens now is when you try to reduce the column size over here, you will see that the command and conquer red alert three uprising is automatically reducing its font size. Let me do this a little further. Let me shorten this up. You will see that this has now, this is now automatically reducing the size of the font and shrinking it so that it fits in that particular column. And if I can reduce this further, you will see that this has been taking effect for all of the columns which have length more than what it can accommodate in that particular column. Isn't this really cool? I hope you guys were not aware of this one. Let me know in the comment section of the 10 tips that I shared with you, how many of the tips did you know? And if you want to see more such tutorials on my channel, please do also let me know in the comment section and I will be happy to share these tips with you. That's it guys in this particular tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.